What's up, guys? Let's move on to our next activity, which is Waters of the Earth. And we are going to be using pages 42 and 43 of our online textbook. Now, we all know the importance of water. Water, you know, is life. Seven, over 75% of our body is made up of water. Tissue, organs, blood have water. Just think about this, guys. You can go a month without eating. Of course, that's not good for your body, but your body can survive. You can't go more than three or four days without drinking water. So water is important. So as always, we'll be putting our answers in the red box. And here's the other thing you need to remember about our planet and water. If you look at you know, pictures from outer space and at globes and those things, you know, we're covered in water, tons of water. And only about 30% of our planet is land. And there's 7 billion people that live on our planet. So, you know, water is important, but land is too, because we've got to have a place to put people. And remember, most of the water on our planet is salt water, which you can't drink it unless you boil it and treat it and everything. Because if you try to drink straight salt water, It'll make you sick, and if you drink too much of it, it'll kill you. So remember, only 3% of the world's water is fresh water, so it's not much. So first one, river. Remember, as always, you can turn your modified text on or off if you want. Now, some of these aren't going to be in yellow this time around, so you're going to have to look. So like, for example... Uh, da -da 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 -da. It's right here, a river. Give you a freebie. A river is a path of water that flows from a higher elevation to a lower, el lower elevation. Most rivers start in mountains. And then they flow, as an example, and then they flow down and usually empty out to a lake or ocean or sea somewhere. Okay, so some of these you're going to have to do a little searching and reading, but also remember. It'll read the whole thing to you if you want it to. Lake. So that should be close to where we found river, and there it is. First one, or next one, name the four oceans of the earth. And if we look, of course, ocean, salt water. Earth's four oceans are, boom, right there. Currents deals with water. If you look right here, aha, seas, smaller version of an ocean, right? There you go. And the only reason we give bodies of water names is because it helps us locate things. Because if you think about it, oceans and seas, all connect together. We just give them names that way we know where they're at in the world, okay? And then here's the big one. It says name and describe. Once again, name and describe the four stages of the hydrologic, hydrologic cycle or the water cycle. This is how the, the earth regulates itself for the amount of water we have on our planet. Let me throw this out at you. The amount of water we have on our planet 10 million years ago is pretty much the same as it is now. I know that's hard to think, but about but it's true you know some years we might have a little more water than some years we might have a little less but it's on average the same because think about it we have an atmosphere that keeps the water inside think of the earth as like a big snow globe almost a globe and, you know inside of a globe snow globe you know, there's the snow and the liquid and all that that keeps it in there same with our atmosphere it keeps the water in there but it regulates itself. So here are the four cycles. If you look at this picture, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, runoff. One, two, three, four. Then I describe what evaporation is. So an example. Evaporation is when the sun heats the ocean and water vapor rises up into the atmosphere. What happens is sun hits the water and everything's made up of molecules. There's a little bit of science. And that heat 
causes those molecules to start moving. And when they start to move really fast, it goes from a liquid to a gas. And we all know that hot air rises. It goes up in the air. And then, and then we have the second stage, condensation. And then you have to figure out what happens in condensation. Then what happens, third stage, precipitation. And then the fourth stage, runoff. Happens every day. It's a constant, that's why they call it a cycle. It does it over and over and over. It's like a motor and a car. Once you start up that car, the motor cycles over and over again until you shut it off. Well, the water cycle never shuts off. It's always a going and working, okay? So that's why water is so important. We need to know about water. And when we do world history, you guys are gonna find out big time how important water is to civilizations and all that. So as always, you need help ask for it. If you have problems or questions, shoot me an email or shoot me a message on school gene. I'll help you out. All right, guys, we'll see you later.